welcome back and good evening to all of you so we'll start uh, the presentation uh, i'll start the presentation on the nature composition and architecture of viruses and viroids properties of viruses nomenclature and classification of viruses variability in viruses what are the satellite viruses rna viruses micro and bacterial viruses so <clears throat> So now, uh, if we start uh, the term uh, virology, so the question in our mind comes first that what is the virus? So nowadays we, uh, from the uh, children to the uh, age-old parents, uh, they came to know about the virus because of the pandemic of coronavirus. So now almost all the peoples they know that the virus. So. so but uh, we need to define the virus virus is defined as a set of one or more nucleic acid template molecules which is normally encased in a protective coat or coats of protein or lipoprotein which is able to organize its own replication only within the suitable host cells so that's why the uh, the virus is defined which, uh, by matthews in 1981 so you can see in the picture this uh, nucleic acid so virus is nothing but the a set of nucleic acid molecules which are protected in a coat protein so this is the definition of uh, virus which is given by matthews so before uh, finalizing this definition there were earlier many definition of the viruses but there were these definitions were not matching the criteria of the viruses because in the initial stages the uh, symptoms uh, of the viruses were resembling the symptoms of micronutrient symptoms of viroids symptoms of bacteria so that's why it was very difficult to finalize the definition of the viruses so now this is one of the justifiable and widely accepted definition of the virus now uh, the characteristics of viruses just a minute huh? i think i'm getting pause okay the characteristics of the plant viruses which are obligately parasitic obligately parasitic means the viruses which requires the living host to complete their entire life cycle so that's why we are calling the viruses are obligate pathogens or oblig obligately parasitic so uh, they are inactive outside the host uh, because they need the living host to carry out their multiplication their development in the system so that's why they are inactive outside the host so they need the host cell uh, machinery for their multiplication so they need the passive transmission the passive transmission in the sense they need the their transmission from one place to another place by the means of vectors so like uh, different animal viruses different for different plant viruses they need, they are transmitted from one plant one plant or one animal to any one next animal by different vectors by the means of vectors or these are the, in case of the plant viruses they are the insect vectors insect vectors nematodes these are the agents they are actually helping the viruses or their for their passive transmission so they require the penetration of intact plant cells so because by their own viruses did not enters in the host cell so they need the penetration inside the host cells so that for their multiplication or their uh, rapid multiplication and their uh, development so the penetration is very much required and the uh, experimental or artificial tra transmission is also required for the plant viruses so <clears throat> to study the because these are the whether these are the transmitted by sap or these are the transmitted by the insect so we need to do the transmission characteristics under the uh, greenhouse conditions or under the artificial conditions so these viruses are dependent on the host protein synthesizing machinery so organized from pools of the required material rather than the binary fission which is occurring in the bacteria binary fission is known in occurring in the um, bacteria 
So <clears throat> they are located at the sites which are not separated from the host cell contents by a lipoprotein bilayer membrane. So they are intactly present in the host system. So before uh, before uh, going to detail a study of the viruses, we need to study the history of viruses because this uh, history teaches so many things of uh, regarding the architecture, um, composition, classification, and replication of the plant viruses. So first, uh, we'll uh, in brief we'll study about the history of uh, plant virology. So first reference of the virus disease is yellow leaf disease of U. Petorium in the year 752. So <clears throat> this uh, this one is the yellow leaf disease is one of the earliest recorded symptoms of the virus disease, which was mentioned way back in the year 752, which was mentioned in the poem, which is composed by the uh, Empress Pongkin. So <clears throat> this one is the earliest disease recorded. So during the 17th century, that uh, since then, in the 17th century in Holland, the color variegation or striping of the tulips, the tulip petals or petal break disease caused by tulip mosaic virus. So, <clears throat> so excuse me. This is one of the <clears throat> popular example of the um, uh, in the history of the plant virology. So <clears throat> this uh, tulip break, uh, tulip petal breaks, petal break. This is one of the uh, important disease in the sense because uh, the breaking of petals in, in the uh, tulip flowers uh, was due, caused due to the, uh, the virus, which is known as a tulip mosaic virus. So that time, this uh, there was a huge demand for these um, these uh, these uh, bulbs of the uh, affected bulbs. So there were a, there was a high demand, and <clears throat> and uh, the people uh, were very uh, crazy about getting these flowers. So that uh, craziness of the high demand of um, the people, which are termed as a tulipomania. This was the term which was coined way back in 17th century. So because there were the earlier barter systems were there because there were at the time there was a people they were and they were not having the enough money. So they they used to get the in, uh, barter system means they used to exchange the things for for example. So these uh, single tulip flowers used to um, exchange with different for example um, different uh, different set of uh, different uh, tons of grains food grains then different uh, quintals of uh, fruits like that uh, like that so there was so you can imagine so how it was a, a huge demand for these um, flowers okay so uh, the cause of the petal break disease was not known until the 1926 so which demonstrated for the first time and uh, it is uh, known by it is uh, transmitted or after transmitted by the two scientists that Mackey and Warner in 1933. So <clears throat> later it uh, came to know that the disease it is caused by tulip mosaic virus, which is again a Tobem virus. Uh, later in 1886, the Adolf Mayer, uh, agricultural chemist at uh, Wagenin in, in Holland working with mosaic disease of tobacco found that the disease could be transmitted from uh, healthy plant by taking the juice of infected plants. It is transmitted to healthy plant by taking the juice of the infected plants. So he for the first time demonstrated that it is uh, the viruses are in on uh, mosaic disease of tobacco so and found the similar results as the mayor discovered but he confirmed that elections are still so he uh, but except uh, he confirmed that mayor's report and uh, he said that the mosaic disease could be sap transmitted and the sap was still infectious after the passing through a chamber landed filter 
because the chamberland filter is known to uh, because in the chamberland filter is uh, it is not retaining the bacteria so uh, after the passing um, it is retaining the bacteria so um, it means that it is neither a bacteria nor uh, the fungus or nor any other pathogen so it is she proved that it is a tra uh, the, still after transplanting from the uh, or uh, after passing through the chamberland filter that that the sap is again uh, transmissible so they uh, she concluded that findings and later um, bearing in 1898 concluded that the disease was not caused by any mi uh, a microbe but by a contagium vivum fluidum contagium means contaminated vivum fluidum contaminated uh, fluid uh, which is toxic fluid vivum is a toxic so con uh, contagium uh, uh, fluid and that contagium could reproduce itself in the living plants and use the word the, for the first time virus to describe it so uh, he is a uh, father of uh, plant virology so he discovered the virus and for the first time so later in 1894 uh, and 1895, Hashimoto showed that the dark disease of rice was transmitted by leaf hopper. Means uh, after the discovery of the discovery of the viruses, the transmission study started, and it was uh, reported that different vectors like Nepotitis uh, is a vector. They for, for the first time in 1900 uh, find out that a vector of the viruses. Then 1929, they discovered the local lesion post for tobacco mosaic virus that is uh, used for the quantitative also for different uh, determination of the concentration of the sap. Early in 1929 that uh, uh, said that virus contain ant antigenic properties that were capable of in the inducing the antibody formation in the mammals. So the use of virus antibodies in various serological reaction has played a major role in the development of the plant viral virology both for the diagnostic purposes and for the quantitative essay. So uh, now we know that antibodies and these terms. Uh, so uh, because these antibodies are produced from the coat protein of the viruses. So that's why the uh, and they are very much uh, used uh, effectively for the diagnostics purposes. So <clears throat> another important discovery in the plant virology that uh, in 19 occurred in 1935. So W.M. Stanley, who reported the isolation and characterization of the virus as crystalline protein. So <clears throat> crystallization of the plant viruses for the first time uh, Stanley has reported. And uh, in 1900, I guess, 1900, 1946, he received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for the discovery of the crystallization of the protein. So uh, beginning, uh, and this was the beginning of the modern plant virology. So later uh, in 1937, F.C. Bowden and Piri they reported that the uh, tobacco mosaic viruses constitute 90% of the So on the viruses uh, are encased in a protective coat of proteins so maximum volume is shared by the coat protein where as um, the five percent is the only nucleus okay but whereas but the protein or nucleic acid ratio is varied with the virus to viruses later discoveries uh, were made and they have concluded or it varies for different viruses for example tobacco uh, tomato bushy stunt virus that consisted 18 percent protein so <clears throat> In 1939, uh, the first EM picture of plant virus was taken by Kaushe and uh, Fankus and Ruska. These three scientists, they for the first time uh, took the picture of viruses under the electron microscope. Williams and Wyckoff in 1904 used a technique that metal shadowing, casting to see the details of the virus particle. So for the, the plant viruses, they were uh, treated with different metals and they were observed under the electron microscopy so that technique they discovered so that's why the, it is called in, uh, called as a shadow technique 
So Brenner and Horn, they developed uh, their negative staining procedures for the to know the structure of the uh, plant viruses. That's why Derrick and uh, 1970 developed the serologically specific electron microscopy that is uh, immunosorbent electron microscopy and so on. So <clears throat> these are the different uh, that immunogold labeling for detection of the viruses discovered by Van Lent and Berlin in 1987. So for management of the plant viruses, so Morel and Martin in 1952, they discovered that meristem tip culture technique uh, is very efficient or is, uh, they demonstrated that it is very effective for the production of the virus-free plants. So because the meristem tissues or meristem tips are uh, not having the presence of the viruses. So the meristem tips, if we uh, cut from the uh, plant, uh, either it is infected or a healthy plant. So we can cut the meristem from these and uh, we can go for in vitro um, cultivation of the plants by following the different uh, tissue culture techniques. So meristem tip culture technique is uh, uh, one of the best uh, technique for the production of the virus free plants. In 1954, Kassanins demonstrated that viruses could be eradicated from the infected plant by the high temperature treatments. This uh, is not feasible approach for all the viruses because the tissues of uh, infected viruses get damaged and the, it is affecting the seed germination. Uh, so it is a uh, practice for the, um, those uh, plants which are propagated by the cuttings or hardwood cuttings or um, by uh, different planting materials, for example, sugarcane. Uh, grapes or other fruit crops or the horticulture crops. So it is practical practical for the crops which are not uh, sensitive for the temperature. So these two techniques on their own or in combination has played a major role in producing the virus free clones of the vegetatively propagated crop plants. In 1968, they discovered the multi-component genomes of the plant viruses. So we'll see in the morphology, the plant viruses are multi-component multipartite they are having the genomes of multipartite so they discovered for the first time that the viruses are composed of different components or different segments of nucleic acid so that's why they discovered the multi-component genomes of the viruses as we know viroids is discovered by T.O. Diener in 1971 mycoplasma by doi in 1967 rickettsia in 1979 this is all about the history of plant viruses. Now, we'll see the nature and composition of uh, viruses. The uh, as we know that infection. Uh, now we majority of the things we came to know that how the viruses are. So by knowing the history of plant viruses. Okay. So infectious nucleic acid, which is compro, uh, which is uh, in infectious nucleic acid, which is a. Uh, uh, contributing the genome of uh, the plant viruses. The genome is encapsulated within the prote protective coat of the protein. So you can see in the picture, this is the structure of tobacco mosaic virus. So <clears throat> this is the nucleic acid. This is circular uh, ring shaped is the um, structure of the nucleic acid that is RNA. So this, uh, these are the capsomeres. The capsomeres are the proteins uh, subunits which are arranged in a fashion, uh, different fashion. So that's why these are called as a capsomeres. And this entirely is called as a capsid. Okay. So these are the arrangement of the protein subunits. These outside, outer side is the protein subunits. This uh, inside is the uh, nucleic acid of the virus. So, and this is entirely a mature uh, structure is uh, which is which we called it as a virion. So this is the virion of the tobacco mosaic virus. Okay. So the genome of plant viruses consist consist of either RNA or DNA, never both. So remember that. So genome of plant viruses consists either RNA or DNA. That RNA or DNA consist of single standard or double standard as a, a genome. So genome composed of single molecule is known as a monopartite. So bipartite and tripartite. So these uh, genome of the plant viruses is uh, either a 
uh, in a single uh, particle or single for example this is the genome uh, this is the single particle of tobacco mosaic virus so it is called as a monopartite so inside uh, within the coat protein i will show you the different uh, shapes of or different uh, genomes of the different multipartite or uh, multi component viruses genome uh, i will show in the classification system so the genome is composed of different molecules so that's why they are called as a multipartite by based on the genome number of genome like uh, uh, segments if the virus is having the single uh, genome so it is as a called as a monopartite if the genome is divided into the two segments so rna is of two segments that it is called as a bipartite if rna is divided into the three segments it is called as a tripartite or multipartite genome okay yes now the <laughs> architecture of the viruses which are the complete mature as i said complete mature virus particle is known as a virion this is the structure of the virus now uh, coronavirus structure you might have seen that so it is resembling the st structure of the coronavirus so these are the lipid envelope this this is a circular outer coating is the lipid envelope this is the protein capsid protein coat okay and within the protein coat it is the nucleic acid either rna or dna and these are the different enzymes these are the spikelets these projections these projections are helping the virus to settle to uh, adhere to a surface for there uh, to uh, uh, for example uh, to adhere uh, for example the virus is transmitted by the insect they get added into the saliva and they get added to the salivary glands or different uh, mouth part uh, ligands present in the mouth parts of the insect the, they are helping for the adherence of the uh, particles virions uh, in the uh, insect uh, mouth parts so these are the spike like projections so these are known as uh, glycoproteins in most of the viruses so capsid as i said capsomeres arrangement of the protein subunits on the surface of the virion so these are the capsomeres so uh, viruses pierce different array of uh, shapes and sizes so viruses they are called as isometric because uh, they uh, it means they are circular bacilliform so viruses uh, are uh, bullet shaped viruses are called bacilliform they are rod shaped they are um, so basically form viruses uh, the size of, is ranged from 70 to 70 nanometer for example rivo viruses are isometric basically form viruses uh, they are having the diameter of 300 nanometer into 95 nanometer so rabdo viruses are the basically form belonging to the basically form uh, category of the viruses rod shaped viruses they are of having the this um, that is uh, two, up to 200 nanometer in length and uh, 23 nanometer in width. Tobra viruses, tobacco rattle viruses are the group of the rod shaped viruses. The long flexuous viruses, they are up to 2000 nanometer in length and uh, 10 nanometer in width. These are the uh, viruses belonging to the Clostero-Viridae family, Clostero viruses. So um, these are the uh, viruses which are belonging to the this category, long flexuous viruses. Now we can see the uh, virus uh, classification to, uh, and taxonomy. So viral uh, viruses uh, taxonomy is the collection of the two terms that is nomenclature and classification. Okay. So in totality virus taxonomy is the combination of these two terms that is nomenclature and classification. Nomencl what is nomenclature? Nomenclature is the assignment of the names to various taxa according to the international rules is known as a nomenclature and classification is the arrangement of the biological entities into the taxonomic categories or any taxa on the basis of their similarities or relationships so together it is known as a viral taxonomy <clears throat> so initially there was a subcommittee on virus nomenclature at the which was uh, during in uh, 1951 
so uh, at which were at the it was then international union of microbiological society at the time of 10th internet it was uh, formulated at the time of 10th international congress of micro microbiology which was held in mexico in uh, 1970 so uh, this iums is nothing but the group of scientific uh, uh, organization scientific uh, community um, which which was uh, then which was subsequently formed into the scme the subcommittee on nomenclature uh, subcommittee on virus nomenclature so and this subcommittee was uh, then uh, discontinued and sim, uh, second uh, committee was form formulated it was known as international committee on taxonomy of viruses so <clears throat> which uh, which ictv which now we call it as an international committee on taxonomy of viruses that is ictv so uh, which uh, was formulated in 1975 so ictv is the organization which uh, recognizes the viruses which are uh, either which are distinct viruses or there are two type of viruses which are distinct viruses means they are well known well studied and they are predominantly occurring in the different hosts so these that's why they are called as a distinct viruses and those uh, species which are uh, not uh, predominantly occurred and they are just at the emergent stages of their development so they are the tentative species of the viruses so international committee on taxonomy of viruses is the organization which uh, ratifies which identifies the notification by different workers they accept the notification they accept the proposals which sent by the different uh, research groups and they evaluate and they uh, Norm and they provide the names to distinct names to the viruses because vir plant virology or animal virology or veterinary vi virology these uh, these viruses are the in every one month we can report uh, there are uh, there are reports of new viruses in every month one virus is reported so the virus taxonomy is changing day by day so the uh, changes in the virus taxonomy or virus classification is ratified by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Virus. So there are subdivisions in international ICTV. There are subdivisions for you know, the subgroups are there. So groups are for animal viruses. Groups there are specific groups for plant viruses. There are specific groups for uh, veterinary viruses. So um, so the, these are the fish uh, fish uh, fishes. So uh, they uh, assign the different tasks to the specific group of people to handle now we can see the taxonomic position of the viruses so real is the first uh, taxonomic uh, category the viruses subreal then kingdom then then phylum subphylum class subclass order suborder family subfamily then genus then subgenus and species so these are the uh, words which are ending suppose the uh, word is ended with the viria it is known as the uh, it is belonging to the real for example virals Vir virals uh, if the term is ending with the virals word so this is the uh, prefix of the uh, terms that is for example mononega virals it means the viruses belong to the order belonging to the mononega virals order Likewise, these are the different uh, taxonomic uh, hierarchy of the mentioning the virus names. So, as I said, the uh, viruses are double standard uh, viruses, single standard viruses, uh, double standard DNA, single standard DNA, double standard RNA viruses. The rivo viruses are the uh, examples of the double standard RNA viruses. In case uh, in the uh, RNA, the uh, single standard viruses, there are two forms. That is. Uh, positive sense single standard uh, rna and negative sense single standard rna so positive sense single standard rna are again uh, divided into uh, that is reverse uh, transcribed in viruses rt viruses they are also said that rt viruses okay so double standard dna they are uh, again uh, double standard dna viruses are reverse transcribing viruses so DNA it means the DNA with the RNA intermediate in their life cycle. So this based on this, the viruses are classified.
this is the um, classification system as uh, based on the um, nucleic acid composition of the plant viruses. Uh, you can see the colimo first. Uh, you can see the colimo virus, so which is a circle, uh, which is circular. So you can see the uh, Badna virus, rice tongro bacilliform virus. It is uh, the Badna virus. Um, Badna virus genus of the virus. So which is showing the uh, shape of the um, bacilliform or shape of the bullet no, bullet like uh, particle. So this is the example of the Badna virus. So Gemini viridi is one of the important family which is transmitted by aphido, um, white flies, which is transmitted by white flies, that is Bemisia tabasi. So Gemini viridi, there are different uh, genera. This is Nona uh, nanovirus, Digomovirus, Maschi, and Cultovirus. These are the different genera of under the family Gemini viridi. So they are, but all the members of the family belonging to the Gemini viridi are. Uh, Twin, twin size particles because these are the twin size particles circular twins uh, twin uh, size particles are there these two particles attached together that's why they are called as a twin 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 so <clears throat> uh, these are the members uh, belonging to the family gemini viridi they are of this uh, shape okay so uh, like uh, rivo viridi they are um, um, icosahedral in symmetry so uh, in a nutshell we are uh, um, called as a circular so similarly part and these are the viruses of having different uh, size and uh, uh, different size of the genomes so <laughs> rabdo viridi the again it is a single standard these are the single standard dna viruses these are the double standard dna viruses so these are the double standard RNA viruses and these uh, single standard RNA viruses are negatively sensed and these are the positively sensed. Okay. So negatively sensed, there are um, two families are there, Rhabdoviridae and Buniaviridae. So Rhabdoviridae is the having the bullet shaped uh, structure of the viruses. The Bunia, Buniaviridae, which is uh, now it is transfer, uh, transformed into the separate family that is Toscoviridae has uh, this uh, family has and the name have, of the family has changed. Now this family is Tospoviridae. So Tospoviridae, the structure of the viruses is uh, as like uh, the coronavirus structure, which is having the proje projections outside. The, these are the glycoproteins, and this one is the virion of the uh, Tospovirus. Okay, enveloped uh, part, uh, enveloped viruses, we can say. So <clears throat> this is the Bromoviridae. These are the different virus, alphamoviruses. So now the uh, rods are, as I said, monopartite viruses, bipartite viruses, multipartite viruses. So the viruses of belonging to the Tobamo viruses, they are monopartite. You can see in the picture that the viral genome is in the single particle. So single segment of any RNA or DNA, that's why they are called as a uh, monopartite. So these are the uh, Tobra viruses are the or, Second one is the Tobra viruses, tobacco rattle viruses. Tobacco means tobacco mosaic viruses. The uh, type member of this uh, genera is the tobacco mosaic virus. Tobra means tobacco rattle viruses, Hordy viruses. So, <coughs> Hordy viruses, barley stripe virus, you can say. So, these are the tripartite viruses. You can see in the picture that the genome of the viruses is divided into three segments of RNA, single standard RNA. That's why these viruses are called as a tripartite viruses. So similarly, uh, the Hordy viruses, the Tospo uh, members belonging to the Tospo viridae family, they are also having the, their genome in the tri, uh, tripartite genome. So this one is the large RNA, this one is the mRNA, and this one is the small RNA. So <clears throat> genome of the viruses is divided into three segments of RNA. That's why they are called as a multipartite or tripartite viruses. Likewise, these are the multi-component viruses. Now these are the rod shaped. Now these are the flexious rods, slightly flexious, then slightly flexious, then somewhat highly flexious, and they are uh, super flexious or highly flexious, the members belonging to the cluster viridae. So, <clears throat> Okay, so these are the OT viruses, one of the largest known viruses, plant viruses, which are having the genome up to 20 KB.
Excuse me. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you can see the different symptoms of the plant viruses. For example, Mumbin yellow viruses. These are the mosaics of the viruses. So cucumber yellow mosaic virus, cucumber mosaic viruses. So leaf curl viruses. You can see the symptoms of the leaf curl viruses. You can see the uh, papaya. This is the symptoms of papaya ring spot viruses. Shoe string is the uh, this is the shoe sting like structure of the leaf is is uh, called as a it is the symptom of the papyrin spot viruses you can you, you can see the symptoms of the papyrin spot viruses on the papaya fruits if you see uh, the papaya fruits in the market they are having the concentric rings on their skin of the fruits okay so it, it is nothing but the infection of the papyrin spot viruses so this is the symptom of the bunchy top, banana bunchy top. Uh, <clears throat> the bunchy growth of the plants that's why the disease is known as a banana bunch top disease so this is the uh, citrus ring spot virus which is showing the chloratic spots these are the chloratic spots of these viruses so these are the electron micrographs of these viruses in the uh, corner you, uh, you can see these are the electron electron micrographs of the electron micrographs of the viruses so these are the structures of leaf curl disease this is the germinate you can see so these are the geminate viruses geminaviridae they, they 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 belong to the family geminaviridae so likewise these are the different symptoms of plant viruses just for your information i am showing you can you can uh, know that these are the symptoms yes these are the symptoms of the plant viruses this is the flower breaking tulips which are having the break uh, petals so these were uh, in 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 history i said that about the flower breaking disease of tulips so this is the uh, tomato uh, fruit which is showing the chlorotic spots the this is due to the viruses of tospoviridae uh, they said these are the multi component viruses tomato spotted wilt viruses the type member of this uh, is the tomato spotted wilt virus this is tissue deformation in the pumpkin. This is necrosis in pear. This is little cherry caused by the viruses. As we know all that viruses need the passive transmission. So passive transmission means the viruses uh, need their transmission or their uh, entry by certain vectors. So in case of the plant viruses, there are different vectors like aphid, leaf hopper, plant hoppers. These are the vectors which are uh, transmitting the plant viruses. As we know that aphid, leaf hopper and plant hoppers, they are having the piercing and sucking type of mouth parts, white flies and white flies. Thrips are the rasping and sucking types of thrips are transmitting the tospoviridae, members belonging to the family tospoviridae, that is tomato spotted wild virus. Thrips are transmitted by tomato spotted, um, uh, tomato spotted wild virus is transmitted by thrips. For example, white flies, they are transmitting the Gemini viruses or begum viruses. Gemini viridae is the family, Begomo viruses is the genus. So these uh, white flies, they are transmitting solely the Begomo viruses or Gemini viridae. So aphids, aphids are the vectors of the uh, plant viruses, those who are belonging to the Potiviridae family. <coughs> okay. So these are the different vectors which are known to transmit the viruses from one plant to another plant. So as besides the insect vectors, there are other nematodes, there are fungal pathogens, those who are transmitting the viruses. So, for example, nematode that they are transmitting the nepo viruses, <coughs> nematode polyhydroviruses, and tobra viruses. Nepo viruses and tobra viruses are transmitted by the nematodes. That is tobra viruses, tobacco ring spot viruses, or tobacco rattle viruses. <coughs> this one is the fungal spores are all pdm brassica is known to carry the tomato necrosis viruses and uh, this one is the cnv is also transmitted by the fungal spores chrysanthemum necrosis virus so as we know uh, the viral genome is composed of different 
genes or different open reading frames the uh, different genes are having their different purpose so for example moment protein moment protein is helpful in the transmission of the plant viruses Port protein is helpful in the protection of the nucleic acid so these are the different uh, open reading frames or these are the different uh, this is the genome of the tobacco mosaic viruses which is uh, starting from 5 prime end and ending at the 3 prime end which is having the different open reading frames open reading frames are uh, the uh, gen uh, region of the genome which are um, translated into uh, different um, protein so and these proteins are uh, associated with different functions for example a replication protein this protein is helpful in the replication of the plant viruses so okay There are the different mechanisms of replication that I will not go in detail because it will take a long time to teach. It will take at least one hour to teach the replication of the plant viruses. So in a nutshell, I told about the, there are different genomes which are helpful for different purposes. Genes which are having different purposes. The genes encoded by the plant viruses, plant viruses encode different proteins that direct the replication and movement of their genomes. The viral replication occurs in association with the host membranes and host factors. Viral movement is uh, directed by the movement protein, as I said. Viral movement protein interact with the host proteins to accomplish their function, cytoskeleton, kinesin, chaperonins, and docking proteins. So, uh, variability in plant viruses is uh, a major uh, issue because we now um, nowadays we know that there are the variation in the plant viruses because coronavirus uh, mutants are there there so now <coughs> after coronavirus delta virus has come now the omicron has come so these are nothing but the variation of the coronaviruses why the variation has occurred because the human viruses are the highly um, rapid in their transmission so from one uh, animal no, from one human being to another human being it takes hardly few hours or it takes hardly few minutes for, of their transmission so they are changing millions and billions of the bodies so they uh, and they get uh, faced by the different resistance mechanism by the uh, mechanism of the humans that's why there is the changes in the genome of the coronavirus so that's why the there is a changes there they are the uh, nothing but the some mutation has occurs in the genome of the uh, plant viruses that's why they uh, and they try to the gene uh, the mutation occurs in the particular segment of the genome so if it is the variation occurs in the specific segment or the uh, there will be a uh, part of the genome which is responsible for the pathogenicity or virulence of the virus. So if the changes occurs in that particular region or uh, the infect, uh, in, infectivity region, so it will be uh, more dangerous. You can uh, remember the second wave of coronavirus was so dangerous and the mortality rate was so dangerous. Uh, region which is responsible for the infectivity okay so that's why the they are more dangerous so the variation is necessity of all the biological system because these viruses changes based on the the conditions and based on the response uh, host response they gets and they start mutates and they recombinate and they form the new uh, or recombinated recombinant of the original virus so we are from uh, for that it is a recombinant of the so omicron is the recombinant of the coronavirus so these are the variations which are occurring in the plant viruses animal viruses or human viruses okay so these are the uh, these are the different mechanisms of variation or uh, that we call it as a mutation recombination and uh, segment reassortment. As I said, there are uh, different parts in the genome that uh, reassortment is the mechanism which 
by which the the some nucleotides get replaced with the another nu nucleotides and it is uh, known as a segment reassortment so <clears throat> so as the plant viruses is, is uh, seg having the segmented genome so this is uh, about the variability in the plant viruses okay the viroids what are the vir viroids are the infectious agents which are uh, consist only a naked rna without any uh, protective layer such as a protein coat the viroids uh, infect the plants and are replicated at the expense of the host cell viroid genomes are small uh, single stranded circles of rna that are only about uh, maybe up to 400 bases they are very smallest particle uh, or smallest organisms uh, smallest than the viruses viroids are the smallest so there are the n number of diseases which are caused by the viroids like potato spindle tuber viroid which is caused by a viroid so there are uh, different viroids which are responsible for causing different diseases in different crops <clears throat> Shall we uh, go with the detection and diagnosis or shall we stop here? Students, <laughs> I'm asking for the students. Hello, is there anyone who is listening? Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So shall we go ahead with the detection system? Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, generous feedback. <laughs> okay. So, uh, di diagnosis uh, and detection, these are the different terms. Uh, so, diagnosis is the identification of the nature of the cause of the disease, whereas detection is the act of detecting the pathogen. It means detection is used for any pathogen. For example, detection of coronavirus. But diagnosis is the, based on the symptoms. So uh, when we are going to the doctors, what doctors is asking, what are the symptoms? Then we are describing the symptoms and doctor is diagnosing the disease. So diagnosis is related to the disease, whereas a detection is related to the pathogen. Okay. So diagnosis and detection, these are the two terms which are widely used nowadays. So you, we, are read, uh, we are listening uh, nowadays very frequently. But we need to understand the difference between the detection and the diagnosis. We are diagnosing the disease and we are detecting the pathogen. So these are the terms which are detection is related to the pathogen. Diagnosis is related to the disease the condition okay, or causal agent or cause of the disease. Okay. So there are the different mechanisms of diagnosis of viral diseases like direct uh, detection uh, electron microscopy is one of the approach because virus particles are in the nanometer sizes and they are not visible under the simple or compound microscope or any other microscope except the electron microscope so because the virus particles are in nanometer length or in nanometer diameter okay <clears throat> So the direct detection is required by the electron microscopy. Indirect detection, for indirect detection, we need to follow the conventional methods. So conventional methods, if we uh, are having the infected plant, we need to test these, uh, whether the virus is transmitted by the sap or whether it is re-inoculated the, under the greenhouse condition or the glasshouse condition. So for that, we need to cut the plants and we need to uh, cut the infected plant parts and we need to prepare the sap of the infected plants and we need to uh, inoculate these plants under the uh, inoculate these plant, these uh, sap into the different hosts so we are carrying it uh, on the indicator host so indicator hosts are the hosts which are required uh, which are showing the symptoms of the viruses so we are growing the indicator host under the glass house conditions and we are inoculating the sap of the virus infected plants and these indicator host will show the symptoms of the viruses then uh, we we can confirm that yes this uh, this is the um, virus is transmitted by the sap or it is not transmitted by the sap so these are the conventional methods that is code protein based serological serological uh, techniques there are uh, different techniques you might have heard about elisa uh, rapid test uh, rapid uh, test is the uh, elisa is a rapid test so enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so here these are the uh, serological tests like dot immunobinding assay electron 
uh, immunosorbent electron microscopy these these are based on the serological te uh, techniques or immunological assay we can say so immuno uh, sero means uh, it is the term which is used for the blood uh, of animal bl um, blood serum it is the uh, uh, anti serum and you know, are uh, the in the antibodies we which are derived for specific viruses derived by the use of uh, animal serum uh, which is having the antibodies so that's why this uh, term is used that serological okay electrophoretic these are the uh, protein based uh, western blot so these are the nucleic acid based that is polymerase chain reaction and then uh, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction and reverse transcription lamp lamp is nothing but the loop mediated isothermal amplification okay so electron microscope we know all about the electron microscope so this is the picture of the electron microscope so these are the different mechanism they are the having the different mechanism electron microscopy i think it is available in the your university campus so you can you might have seen that uh, the equipment electron microscope so this is the electron microscope which is used for the identification of the virion or virus particles okay so these are the structure of the tobacco mosaic viruses so these are the rod shaped uh, tobacco mosaic viruses electron microscopes so <clears throat> these are the symptoms of citrus mosaic virus uh, structure of the viruses under the electron microscope so this one is the indian citrus ring spot virus which is highly flexuous uh, tobacco stick virus uh, stick virus it is circular tomato leaf curl virus this is geminate this is showing the symptoms of leaf curl cupping cupping is the symptoms of the leaf curl this is the chlorotic spots as i said earlier so these are the geminate particles electron micrograph of the tomato leaf curl virus the biological indexing so biological means we need to uh, study the viruses under the controlled condition so for that live test plants are required so they are controlled under the glass house uh, controlled conditions under the glass house uh, are required it is labor intensive and time consuming test but these are the standard procedures to be followed for studying the plant viruses so for the uh, quantity um, for quantification and for the biological assays serological method as these are the steps of elisa so there are the different formats of the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so uh, there are two uh, types that is direct elisa and indirect elisa Di uh, direct elisa and direct elisa is um, known as a dac elisa direct antigen coated elisa it is known as a dac elisa and indirect elisa is uh, known as a direct antibody sandwich elisa so double double antibody sandwich elisa so these are the uh, formats of the elisa which are for example so uh, this is the uh, elisa we are conducting under the 96 uh, <coughs> well plate uh, micro titer uh, this is the this is the well of the uh, 96 uh, uh, samples okay so this is the well so we are coating the wells with the antibody so why a shift is the antibody coating uh, the plates with the antibody initially and subsequently we are uh, after adding the antibody we are washing the plates for three times for uh, maybe around five minutes so we are repeating the washing for three times and after that we are adding the <coughs> we are adding the uh, antigen the or the sap which is extracted from the virus infected plants we are adding the sap uh, on the particular antibody so these uh, antibody antigen reaction will be there and again we will uh, follow the washing steps and after the this step so we will add the uh, enzyme labeled secondary antibody which is enzyme labeled and this is the universal antibody which is you know, used for amongst for all the viruses so this will be the universal antibodies and which is enzyme labeled with the IgG uh, <clears throat> so after uh, adding this uh, secondary antibody we are again following the washing steps and after this we are adding the uh, pnpp tab tablets for the color development so for uh, for example the plates we, uh, the wells those who are showing the 
the plates those who are showing the yellow color it means the virus is present in the particular plant so, okay so this is the ELISA plate you can see so yellow means the it is the positive sam samples those who are uh, positive it is showing the yellow color but those who are negative they will not show any the yellow color so this is the ELISA plate so when we are carrying out the, uh, the ELISA under the B6 uh, micro micro which is micro title well ELISA plate okay so dot immunobinding assay is the method for the antigen uh, is blotted on the nitrocellulase membrane and enzyme is conjugated with the antibody is used to detect the virus so this is the uh, DBA that is dot immunobinding assay uh, this is the nitrocellulose membrane on which the antibodies are um, <coughs> antigen is blotted and uh, on the nitrocellulose membrane and uh, this is the so those uh, who are showing the uh, reaction this means there is a uh, presence of the virus those who are not showing any uh, reaction it means the the samples are not having the any viruses so immunosorbent uh, enzyme link uh, immunosorbent electron microscopy is uh, the serological technique used for the um, virus uh, this is uh, again uh, we are using the specific antibody for the um, coating of the virus particles so it is uh, Observed under the electron microscope. That's why the term lateral flow is one of the technique recently used. Lateral flow is nothing but the uh, nowadays we are um, getting uh, in the medicine uh, medical store that uh, pregnancy detection kits. So which are nothing but the uh, principle which is followed to, by the lateral flow techniques. So uh, in this technique, what the, we are using it is that. Now we are using the nitrocellulose membrane and this nitrocellulose membrane is coated with the uh, antibody uh, and uh, then we are uh, this this for example this is this is the um, structure of this uh, lateral flow device so this is the sample pad sample pad means we are adding here the antigen antigen uh, which is uh, isolated uh, antigen means the sap which is we have collected from the infected plant so this is the conjunction. This there, there will be two lines, so test line and the control line. So if the results are positive, and the, both the lines are showing the band. So it means the sample is containing the virus. And if there is only um, one band in the control line, so there will be a and uh, it is not uh, the test line is not showing the any uh, the any color or any band. So after adding the antigen. So it means it is a negative of the viruses. So this is the basic uh, principle of this lateral flow assay. So we know all that uh, polymerase chain reaction. So um, polymerase chain reaction is carried out for the known uh, detection of the known viruses. So <clears throat> we are amplifying the DNA segment, which is situated between the two regions of known nucleotide sequences. So uh, okay. So RT-PCR, uh, re reverse transcription. Why we are you know, going for the reverse transcription? Because most of the RNAs, uh, most of the viruses are composed of the RNA, either single standard or double standard. So the, those viruses who are, uh, which are a single standard viruses or double standard, they need to uh, synthesize the DNA. Okay, first. So that's why we are subjecting these RNAs to the formation of the cDNA first. So that's why we are transcribing and trans, uh, trans, uh, transcribing it into the cDNA. That's why the reverse trans. We are calling it as a reverse transcription PCR. Okay. So these are the basic components of the um, polymerase chain reaction. Uh, first, we are using the DNA as a template. So which uh, for which uh, we are uh, amplifying the region. So that DNA is uh, required. So either it is a cDNA or uh, DNA. Of, for example, for uh, Gemini viruses, these are the uh, having the uh, DNA as their genome. Okay, so we'll uh, take a uh, DNA as a template for amplification of the big home viruses. So we are using the two primers that is forward primers and reverse primer, which will be very specific. So, <clears throat> tech polymerase, which is an enzyme which is uh, isolated from Thermus aquaticus bacterium, so it is a thermo tolerant. Uh, enzyme which uh, which copies the region of to be amplified okay so dna um, dntps we are using which uh, 
helps in uh, binding of the dna to the dna polymerases okay and buffer we are using for the maintaining the uh, ph of the solution or uh, providing the suitable conditions for the dna polymerase so these are the <coughs> step so is denaturation so initial denaturation will be at uh, carried out at 95 degrees celsius because denaturation is the step where we have to separate the dna strands because dna is the double uh, uh, double helical structure okay so we need to break these uh, double helical structure into the single standard uh, uh, single strands these these are the two strands we need to denature these strands separately and for the further amplification because we need to replicate uh, we need to amplify these uh, these uh, these uh, segments of these uh, 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 genes of this uh, segment of dna okay so we uh, then we first we denature and then second step is the annealing which is carried out at the annealing is the temperature which is varies with the conditions of the primer okay so we are using the uh, suppose forward and reverse primer we are using so it is varying with the uh, it is the actual uh, melting temperature uh, we are causing it in forward is it has a melting temperature okay so so uh, at this temperature means the primers are uh, binding to the particular sites for their application this is the second step that is annealing annealing is the step where the primers binds to their respective sites this is the annealing steps okay. so after annealing the it is subjected to the uh, further uh, synthesis okay. okay so in this the tag polymerase get attached to the primer in this tag polymerases get attached primers and uh, the dntp starts adding the nucleotides so how that's how the uh, strands get developed so this uh, is the uh, development of the strands so and this that's how and these we are subjecting these three steps for uh, different cycle uh, different uh, cycle for example 20 to 30 cycles or 20 to 40 cycles so we are uh, means we are amplifying this for the 30 times so that it can be visualized in the gel electrophores so these are as i said these are the different steps and uh, so we are how the single uh, dna can be copied into the 68 billion copies by following the PCR polymer chain reaction. Okay. So this is the real time PCR. This is the real time PCR machine. Why it is real called as a real time? Because we can really see the expression or re progress of the uh, expression of any gene. Uh, so that's why the, this uh, this polymer chain reaction is called as a real time PCR so there are the different uh, detection <coughs> detection limit of these uh, different techniques which are used for the diagnosis of the plant viruses so post infectivity is having the detection limit of 100 nanogram so electron microscopy is uh, having the uh, detection limit of 100 nanogram elisa is 1 to 10 nanogram so whereas the real time pcr it goes to 100 uh, and uh, 100 nanogram so okay so this is the detection limit of different diagnostic techniques which are used for the detection of the plant viruses. So in quickly, I will show the uh, viruses of the grapes. So symptoms of the vir grape wine viruses. So this is the grape wine leaf rot disease, which is uh, causing the huge damage in the grape. So I'll just show you the pictures. Grape wine leaf rot disease is transmitted by the millipop. Uh, this is the electron micrograph of the virus particle which is highly flexuous rods another important disease is the fan lip degeneration so these are the symptoms of this fan lip virus in the grapes so intervenal area remains green and the veins become yellow so this is the structure of the fan lip virus uh, symptoms of the fan lip virus which is transmitted by nematodes this is tobacco uh, spot viruses this is the uh, symptoms of the uh, stem pitting, uh, post stem pitting viruses. So it means they are causing the pitting, stem pitting symptoms in the grape wines. So uh, stem
stems get uh, distorted, stems get thinner as compared to the healthy plants. So for management of the plant viruses, we need to follow, as I said, in the history itself, meristem tip culture. So meristem tip culture is one of the effective approach to produce the virus indexing of rootstocks and hybrids at the nursery stage is very much required to, for production of the quality seeds of any planting material or any plants. So these are the very important aspects as far as the production of the virus free plants. So ELISA, of course, is one of the most robust and routinely used technique for the detection and diagnosis of the plant viruses. So RTPCR and other approaches, as I said, so they are used for the simultaneous detection of uh, RTPCR. In, in RTPCR, we can uh, ha are having the ability to detect the uh, large number of viruses at a time. That is simultaneous detection of uh, more than two viruses, three viruses. So that's why we are calling it as a multiplexing of PCR. So uh, in a in a single reaction, we can detect multiple viruses in polymeric chain reaction by using the, um, these techniques. So uh, this nowadays uh, nowadays this is one of the uh, widely used technique for detection of the plant viruses. So uh, conventional and non-conventional predicting approaches for uh, virus register program has to be implemented implemented and uh, virus resistant need to be generated. So how the virus resistant varieties because uh, now uh, nowadays uh, till date we uh, do not have the permission to grow the GMO crops so because of different biosafety and biosecurity issues. So we need to follow the, uh, uh, that's why the recent technique has come that is CRISPR-Cas system mediator resistance. CRISPR is, what is CRISPR? CRISPR is the clustered regularly interspecific palindromic repeats. Interspecific short palindromic repeats. CRISPR, CRISPR uh, and uh, bacterial system from where it has been used. So this is the uh, system which is very uh, recently and uh, I think uh, the Nobel uh, for the discovery of this technique, the Nobel Prize uh, in chemistry has received to uh, uh, the two ladies, those who have discovered this technique. Okay, so this is one of the novel recently uh, discovered and uh, one of the efficient approach for development of the um, crops which uh, for the uh, disease resistance instead of going for GMO crops. So this is uh, an alternative approach for the transgenic crops, you can see. So these are the different strategies for the management of the viruses. So that's all. So thank you for patient hearing. And thank you one and all.